Mandos, Mandos, this is the Mandos. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Mandalorian, and the X-Wing Jesus. No baby Grogu today, he's gone missing. So anyway, we're going to be going through and looking at all the villains of Star Wars. Not all the villains, because there are hundreds. Not going through every stormtrooper, every battle droid, none of that. Just the main culprits. Um, hence why I'm dressed like this today. So, to start off, we're going to look in chronological order. That was a good take. And uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. So, we'll start with the prequels, now known as Fall of the Jedi. So, looking at the, looking at the, time, the new timeline, which includes the, for the High Republic, we, we start with the Fall of the Jedi anyway. So uh, the main number one villain is Palpatine. So uh, it's not a lot you can, you can say about that, apart from, yes, diabolical, what a schema. How did the Jedi ever know, or ever not know, who he was? Unbelievable. You know, Sith master like that. And they're all sitting there on Coruscant, meeting him every day. No idea who he is, who he really is, or what he's scheming. Crazy. But anyway, he had two apprentices. So we have Darth Maul, another fantastic villain. Um, starts off as a henchman and, and moves on to other things. That first, who knew that first outing was going to be like that? So, uh, and then we've got Dooku, the second villain of the trilogy. Uh, yeah, and played by the master Bruce Lee. Oh, wicked. Absolutely wicked. But um, he also had other apprentices as well, as we'll find out later. Then there was uh, also Sebulba. All right, not a Sith Lord or anything like that. He was still a bad guy. Win at all costs. Threw that spanner in the works with, against Anakin, driving their pod racing. And uh, we've got Jabba as well. He was, he was, that was our first look at Jabba in the timeline, crime overlord. Uh, and then we have Vader himself. You know, that's what the first three films was about, Vader coming along. And that's how, it, that's how he came up into uh, being. So anyway, then we go on to Clone Wars. And uh, as we said, Dooku had an apprentice, number one apprentice, Asajj Ventress. Now she was pretty cool. She's very cool. She turned into a bounty hunter and everything. So wicked, not just a dark Jedi, but a bounty hunter as well. And then we had Wat Tamba working for the Techno Union, was it? Trade Federation, Techno Union, something like that. And then we had some man bad Mandalorians as well. So Almec, the, uh, the president of Mandalore, he, he makes quite a significant impact. And then Gar Saxon as well, who goes on through Rebels to be a real pain in the derriere. Nobody even knew I could speak French there, so I, where that come from, I don't know. So moving on, we have uh, Solo on top of that. So a few new crime bosses. So the first one was Lady Proxima, bit of, leading a bit of a uh, Fagan-like cr criminal enterprise there. And then also Dryden Voss, which is a bit more of a crime syndicate figure, a bit more of a major criminal going on there in the underworlds and that. So that was pretty cool, uh, which leads us on to Rebels. We have Agent Callus, who, spoiler alert, he's not really a bad guy, he's not a villain, he's, he's a good guy in the end. We also had the Grand Inquisitor, who was a good guy, turns to a bad guy. And yeah, all round bad guy. Uh, he was pretty, pretty decent villain as well. It's good. Um, then we have also in Rebels the first look at Grand Admiral Thrawn. So Thrawn, awesome strategist, and I think there's going to be. He's uh, been in the comics a lot. He's a major player, and uh, I think he's going to be in Ashoka as the main villain. We'll have to wait and see whether that big crossover is going to be him or not. So, uh, which leads us on to the age of the rebellion after that. So we've got Grand Moff Tarkin. Oh, he's evil, properly evil. Who, as we'll find out, 
properly evil in a couple of film, films there. Rogue One, I've just literally just finished watching Rogue One. And then obviously he gets promotion from, from Rogue One and then we see him on the Death Star. Then all the way through, and obviously we've got director Krennic as well in, in there. Always got the ambitions of being somebody a lot bigger and, and more diabolical than he actually is. Just too much ambition, I think, there. And we haven't seen him yet in any of the films or anything. Prince Giza, or Ziza, or Giza, or however you want to say it. So massive criminal overlord. He, he's basically, if you read Shadows of the Empire, he's the main bad guy in that. And he's, he's the head of the Black Sun organization, which is feared throughout the known galaxy. So, yeah, he's pretty, pretty influential in whilst the Empire is up and running. And he probably gained the most out of everything by the fall of the Empire as well. So then we go to the New Republic and we've got Moff Gideon. One of the latest bad guys that we see running amok. We haven't really seen enough of him, though. So hopefully he's coming back in season three. He's going to break away from his capture, along with Dr. Pershing as well. He's another evil so-and-so. Um, yeah, hopefully we are going to see a lot more of those two, because it would be a shame to just have two seasons of those two. I think got Moff Gideon with with the acting that's going on there is brilliant. And that can't just build up to, to that. So hopefully that there's more to come of that. So then we go on and look at the First Order. We've got the, the, the near enough the main architect is Snoke, only in two films and then killed off. But as we've already seen in The Mandalorian, there's clone work going on there. And was he engineered or not? Who knows? Then we've got Kylo. Obviously, Kylo Ren, he's a bad guy, turns good guy. So, oh, not that bad. There's always question marks throughout the whole of the three films, whether he's actually bad or not. But there we go. Uh, Captain Phasma, not really did a lot in the films, to be honest, apart from order some executions and then they didn't happen. So, I don't know. That was a lost opportunity with her. It built her up to be so big before the start of those films. And then you have to read the books to find out how bad she is. Anyway, then you've got Pyre as well, Captain Pyre. I think he's a captain anyway. He's the gold one. And he's, he's in resistance. And he's a major one rig as well. Uh, and then we've got General Hux, who actually turns out to be a good guy. Bad in the first one, good by the end of film three. And then we've got General Pride as well. He looks like he was going to be a pretty decent villain, but sadly only in one. Um, Grogu just popped in and thought he'd say hello. So uh, there you go. Do you feel better after that? Yeah? Yeah, he feels good. He just, he missed you all. And so here he is. All right. So that's the end of um, Villains Part 1. Now, originally that was just all going to be one episode, but it, proved to be far too long at plus 30 minutes. So I've had to cut loads back. This was, that was recorded a couple of weeks ago. Since then, Mando's banter boxes has come up. So that has been a little bit of an old video, hence why I'm a little bit different for this video. All right, so thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Villains part two, top five. This is the way. Mandos, Mandos, the end.